Hello YouTube. Well it's time for another installment of the 6502 computer project and today I thought I'd show you a little bit about how I design the circuit board and end up with uh, something that I can solder parts to and have as a running computer. So here you're looking at uh, CADSoft Eagle. That's what I use to do my um, board layout. Um, but before I even start with that, uh, what I'll do, I'll minimize this here. Let's see. I'll start out with a notepad file and just kind of take notes about um, what I'm thinking I'd like to build. In this case, you can see um, I was influenced by a few different uh, people that have built things online as well as existing machines. Um, I wanted a 6502 uh, as the CPU and was thinking we'd do it old school, you know, one megahertz uh, crystal and 32K RAM and ROM and uh, kind of outlined, uh, outlaid what I wanted to, uh, outlined I should say, what I wanted to build, uh, what parts I wanted to use, um, how I would do the addressing and just, you know, as I was kind of putting things together, uh, just taking notes of um, how I could get it to work. So um, then I started uh, building a to-do list, and as I was doing this, um, I'll go back to CADSoft Eagle here, um, I started taking the parts that I had listed in my notepad file and just adding them to a generic schematic, and then wiring up as many of the things that I knew how to connect. Um, so for example, uh, I knew I wanted to have a power supply and so I built the power supply section with a power in jack, um, a place to connect a switch, and uh, so capa some capacitors and also voltage regulators to provide both VCC at 5 volts and VDD at 3.3 volts because I knew I wanted to use a uh, parallax propeller for the I.O. Um, also things like the um, decoupling capacitors for the uh, 5 volt chips and the 3.3 volt chips. Uh, reset switch for the CPU and also reset switch for the propeller, um, which is down here. Um, and, and just, you know, I started adding things to it. Here's the glue logic. Um, here's the grounds for the glue logic gates that we didn't use. Uh, the 555 timer circuit, the uh, peripheral interface adapter, and uh, RAM, ROM, CPU, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, once I had all of the parts and I had an idea of how I wanted to wire it up, what I'd start to do is I'd start to print out a, a big enough hard copy that I could take into uh, my room where I do my work. I'm jokingly calling it a lab. It's really a card table in my basement. Um, and uh, I started proving out as much of the design as I could with uh, breadboard and wires and actually turning it on and seeing it run. You've seen me uh, with the videos of that as I was testing. I found a ton of things that didn't work or just things that I had missed when I was reading the uh, data sheets for each one of the chips which is also a big part of the design project uh, process I forgot to mention. Um, you end up reading the data sheets and figuring out how these chips work and what you need to do to, uh, to wire them up. Which then turned into my own notes of how I wanted to wire up the glue logic so that I could uh, turn on, for example, the ROM chip and uh, the uh, truth tables for uh, the address decoding and what would be needed to spell out different address locations. Um, anyways, and then after testing things with the breadboard, uh, reiterating through and making those updates for fixes that I um, found back into the schematic and, uh, and then keep testing and so on and so forth. And then eventually, um, you know, once I proved out enough of the schematic that I knew it was fully working, 
I then went and uh, laid out a design um, trying to uh, get as many, well, I shouldn't say as many, all of the parts in place on as small of a board as possible, which is important to keep costs down because when you're having circuit boards made, they charge you by the square inch. Um, and um, a big part of getting that to work is dragging and turning the chips around so that uh, the wiring paths line up naturally uh, as best as they can. And then for me, I'm still learning a bit with uh, how to do efficient routing, and so I use the auto router, believe it or not, but then I have to tweak it and adjust it for once it's done, not everything routes, and um, I'll have to connect uh, areas of the ground planes that I use on the top and the bottom uh, where they've broken apart by using uh, vias. I'll add some vias and make sure that the connectivity is good. Um, I make sure to add proper labeling so uh, if I you know end up making this a kit that people can buy it's self-documenting to some degree at least they'll know what kind of power supply or at the very least if no, none of these sell at least you know I'll remember what to plug into it right um, so getting all the chip labels on here the proper direction of each label the polarity of, uh, of larger capacitors that um, that are polarized uh, and diodes and uh, let's see labeling the entire expansion bus so that it's easy to connect things to later on um, yeah, adding my contact info for if I do sell this uh, somebody that has an issue will know how to get support um, labeling the revision of the board and then when that's done end up sending it away to a board house and here's the result. Uh, I'll try and get my hand out of the way here and not be too clumsy about it. So there you go. It fits on a 4x6 two layer circuit board. And I've built a few different projects with uh, circuit boards before, so I've verified already that the, uh, the libraries I'm using, for example, the RCA connector and the keyboard, I know what part numbers to order um, to fit to make sure that that'll all work. And finally, if I can pull this up quickly, um, I make a bill of materials. Um, you can start out by generating this from Eagle, actually, um, which also generates the files needed to send the board house to have your board made. Um, and then uh, the only problem is it comes out as a text file if you generate the bill of materials automatically. And so I need to go through and update um, notes. And I add some colors and formatting to make it a little easier to read. I went through, I like to order from Mauser uh, myself, so I went through and got all the part numbers and quantity of one cost, um, how much it would cost per unit, quantity of one, and, uh, and that's it. So anyways, I wanted to show you a little bit of um, what I do from start to finish where I'm looking to uh, design a new machine. Um, here's another thing that I do is I keep a consistent folder structure for uh, what I'm um, building. So uh, I keep my notes, things I know I need to do, any notes on strategy I might have. Um, a lot of times I have influences, like in this case I was heavily influenced by um, Ben Heck when he did his Apple One replica laptop, and also Vince Briel who builds awesome stuff and uh, makes his schematics online. And so um, I'll find if they've got their content available online and I'll download it. And then you've got just one more source of information of things, you know, that uh, you can pull together into your design. I take the data sheets from every single part that I include in the computer. Even if, um, here's a part that I didn't end up using but I was considering using. Um, I have this available for reference. 
data sheets are available for no cost and uh, will tell you exactly how to wire up each chip, how fast the chip is. So um, with things like glue logic, uh, propagation delays are important. You can't have so much glue logic that um, it takes too long for a CPU to get through all of your logic layers and make it to memory in time to read or write. Um, if, if you have too many layers based on the speed that's listed for the parts you're using, um, your computer won't work. And so uh, this is where you get all of that information so that you can make sure it works. Um, Anyways, uh, just another quick installment, kind of showing you um, what I do. This is certainly not the method or the de facto way of doing this stuff, but it's just what I do to keep all of my notes and things together so I have sort of an organized way of working, um, which helps me get my work done. And I uh, hope you found that uh, interesting, and uh, maybe next time I'll have the computer assembled and we'll be able to show you the running uh, circuit board. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.